What is up, guys, gals? Welcome back to another video. Very glad that you are here. This is video recording number two for today. I just felt like I was really in the flow today. And this is a message that came through to me early this morning that I just felt strongly that I was also supposed to make a video on. So topic of this video is we jump right in. You have a gift. You have many gifts, but you have a gift that you must share. You have gifts and you must share them. You must share them, guys. You, you must in order to feel fulfilled and really create the life you want. You have gifts. You must share them i'm serious man this is really really coming through strong right now like you've got to share these gifts so you have many gifts you have many many gifts that are unique to you and even if they're shared gifts there's a lot of people that are great at art there's a lot of people that are great at music it doesn't matter your unique gift with art your unique gift with music your unique voice and speaking and the messages you have to speak even if you hear other people saying them, it doesn't matter. It's still your unique gift that you need to share because your unique gift is just that, yours. You're also a singer-songwriter. You write the same song as this other person. You're singing about the same thing. It doesn't matter. It's your unique voice that makes it special and you've got to share it for so many reasons. And we're gonna get right into it. Even if they're shared gifts, music, art, right? These are just the examples. Uh, speaking, writing, storytelling, um, fitness, uh, accounting, um, whatever your unique viewpoint is, it's a shared gift, but it's still unique to you and it has to be shared. This is for a reason. Your gifts have been given you, given to you for a reason, a very specific reason and a very specific purpose. These are your gifts. They must be shared. They're your special talents, your special gifts. They are a gift from the divine. They've been given to you. You've got to share them. I've already said that a thousand times because I'm so serious about this. Man, this is really coming through. This is for a reason. This is what you're supposed to do with your life. This is what you're supposed to do with your life. Your unique gifts, your unique talents, you're supposed to share them. This is your life's purpose. This is what you're supposed to be doing. This is how you help yourself by sharing your gifts. So if you're unfulfilled and you're in a nine to five, you're not meant to be a CPA anymore. You don't want to do that. You're not meant to be a waiter forever. You're not meant to work at the grocery store forever. You're not meant to uh, be a financial advisor forever. And maybe you are, maybe that is your unique gift. You're great at coaching people. You love numbers, you love money, and this is your way to help people. That is your unique gift. You've got to do these. This is the way that you help yourself and you help other people. By helping others, you will help yourself, vice versa. That's just how it works. We're all one. This is something that you love to do. And of course, you love to do a lot of things, but your unique gift that you really want to do, your purpose, something that you absolutely love to do, you absolutely have always loved to do it. You're naturally great at it. Something that you're really good at, that you've always loved to do. Ooh, excuse me, you enjoy it? You've always enjoyed it, and you've always been kind of naturally talented at it, or it's come easily for you. You can do it for hours at a time, it ain't no thing. And every time you do it, it lights you up and you're fulfilled. So I'll give my own personal example. So the first one, I've told this story before, uh, when I graduated college, you know, um, I was waiting tables at a nice restaurant downtown San Diego and I was just like, okay, like I have these degrees, but I don't even want to do anything with these degrees, psychology and marketing. And uh, of course, like I, they kind of, I guess are who I am. I kind of just always do them psychology and marketing, right? It's people, it's behavior. It's just what I'm most interested in people, personal development, a lot of stuff like that. Anyways, I was like, dude, psychology and marketing. I don't want a job in marketing. I got a job at like a small sports marketing company local and I didn't enjoy it. I didn't like it. I was like, eh, I don't like this. I was like, I don't like sitting in a desk and sure it's creative. We're thinking about like campaigns, demographics, pitches, all these things. And there's some sales to it, right? Getting clients and all that. I was like, I don't want to do this. And I 
you know, didn't want to wait tables forever. I was just paying the bills. I'm like, all right, well, I don't want to do these things. So for a while, maybe like a year, six months to a year, it was like slowly crept up more and more. I was like, I'm so freaking unhappy, man. Like, what do I want to do? Like, I don't understand. I don't want to do this stuff. I think I've told this story before on one of my videos anyways, but, um, I was sitting there and after like, I don't know, four or five months of like thinking soul searching, like, what do I want to do with my life? I was like, Oh, I'm so stressed out. I need to just go and work out, blow off some steam, ding, light bulb hit. I was like, Oh, I'm supposed to have a career in fitness. I've always been a great athlete, you know, not like a professional level athlete. Um, I was told that I could have been a professional soccer player, but I didn't develop in that sport until late. But anyways, that's besides the point. But I've uh, always been a good athlete, but I've always been extremely good with my body. Awareness. Um, just the way that I move, understanding how people move. The, I, I have always worked out and been a jock and like enjoyed it, loved it. Just taking care of my body, working out, like, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat, like anything physical. I love it. I love physical stuff. And I was like, ding, ding, ding. I'm supposed to do it something that I've always been good at that I do for fun that I've done no matter what and I'll do no matter what it's just part of who I am it comes easy to me um, like working with people it's easy to me so that was one gift that I had and I built a career off that for nine years about yeah nine nine and a half years and I won't go into all the details of that I want to stick to the story so that's how I discovered one gift I had to share impact I've trained hundreds and hundreds if not thou a thousand plus people I have like nine thousand close to 10,000 sessions under my belt probably of like one-on-one -on -one personal training. Absolutely loved it. And I still do, but it's not my path anymore. Spirit has shown me a different purpose and here I am talking to you. And I'll, and that is my second gift that I'm sharing with you now that I'm leading into. So something that you're, that has always been a part of you that comes easy to you that you'd love to do. This is your unique gift. My second unique gift, which is what I'm really starting to blossom into now I've always loved to read. I've always loved to write. I've always loved to speak. A lot of people have fear of public speaking because they're afraid of what other people think. I've never had a fear of public speaking, day one. When I was in high school, I ran for like senior class vice president, like I think my sophomore year. I didn't even care about the, that was more of an ego thing. I was like a you know, young kid, like 14 years old, and I was like the popular kid or whatever, one of them. So I just wanted to get up and prove that I could win. It was just some popularity contest, but I had to give a speech in front of the whole class and whatever it is, like hundreds of people, I didn't hesitate for a moment. I didn't even prepare anything. I just went up and just started talking and it felt so natural. That was my first instance of true public speaking. I always used to love to like read out loud when teachers would pick you and your class and you like read the story or whatever or the syllabus or whatever I always used to volunteer I used to get love getting up in front of people and just speaking I just always loved that I've all and then I found out as I got older I love to write I just love to just write thoughts out read study old texts and just stories but a lot of nonfiction anyways all that to be said those are my gifts speaking writing fitness I do have other gifts, but these ones are really so near and dear to my heart. They come so easily and naturally for me. I enjoy it. And it's how I can really help people directly, right? So you have got to look at what your unique gifts are. What is it you love to do that's easy for you? You can do it for hours and time passes. And it's an ain't no thing. You're gonna do it no matter what. It doesn't feel like and I have to. It's like I get to, I want to do this. How do I make time so I can do this? It brings you joy. What are your gifts? What are your unique talents? What are your interests? How can you help people doing those? What are the things that come easily and naturally for you that you can help other people with? It is numbers. I hate I don't hate numbers. They are what they are and necessary part of business and all that. But, um, you know, I can't be a CPA or I wouldn't want to, I can, and I could, but I would be miserable sitting in there. But I have friends that are CPAs, financial advisors. A lot of these, they love it. This is what they love. And the more power to them. That's great. That's not me. Maybe that's you. That's fantastic. Go do that. What are your unique gifts? What are your unique talents? You'd love to do hair. Go get it girl or guy. Go become a stylist. Go to school if you want. Go start doing hair. That's what you love. That's where you're going to make the most money. That's where you're going to be happiest and most fulfilled. And that's how you're going to make other people happy and fulfilled. Go do hair. Become a barber. Become a stylist. Go do that. Seriously. That's what you're meant for. That's what you will be fulfilling. This is something you love to do. You're naturally great at 
What are your gifts? Do it, share it. So many people are waiting for your song. Maybe literally, you're a musician. They're waiting for your song. They're waiting for your poem. They're waiting for your art piece. You may create an art piece that changes someone's life because it reminds them of their grandma. And all of a sudden, you've brought such peace and closure to that relationship just by you painting this beautiful picture of this old woman out in nature. I don't know, but you see what I'm saying? That's your gift, you gotta share that. There's somebody, there's somebody, there's many somebodies that are waiting for you to share what it is that you have to offer. You're, they're waiting for your guidance. They're waiting for your experience. They're waiting for your mentorship. They're waiting for you to share that beautiful divine passion that you have. They're waiting for it. Start it, do it. You gotta get started, just do it ASAP for fun. Do it, start it ASAP, no expectations. Do it because it gives you joy and you love it. And this is something that you like. Even if, don't worry about making money out of it or nothing like that, just go do it because you like to do it. You, and if what one thing that may be preventing you from starting it, you're like, oh, what's everyone going to think? My friends, my family. Don't tell them. That's why I made that video about building and moving in silence. Then just don't tell them. Just do it for you. This is for you. Your gift is for you for, first, for you to enjoy. This is your soul speaking to you. This is for your fulfillment. And as a result of you filling your own cup, you're filling your own heart, doing what you love. You will naturally share it with the world and when you're ready, you'll expose it. Get over what other people think. You have to expect opposition when you begin to share your gift and your passion and your purpose. Expect opposition. Because here's the thing about that. When you get opposition, that actually means you're on the right track. You're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Because the dark does not want the light to win. So you're going to be opposed. You're going to be gossiped about whatever it doesn't matter who cares when you're doing what you love that doesn't matter because your vibration your positivity is going to be so higher all the haters they just fall off all that negative energy can't even touch you it gotta go you're doing this for you and to help other people and by you becoming a happier healthier more fulfilled person you're naturally raising the collective consciousness and owning your light light worker because you're vibrating at a high level. You're like a little lighthouse walking around because you're just happy as can be because you're fulfilling your own cup, your own purpose, which is what everyone needs to do. And then by you doing that, you also inspire others to do what they should do. Look, you got one candle, you light another one, you light another one, we're all lit up now doing our thing, raising the vibration of the planet. That's what we're here for. Get over what other people think, expect opposition. This is how you know you're on the right path. When you start to get haters, you're getting attention. It's because these are agents, these are dark agents sent to try to bring you down. Sounds crazy like that, but it's true. That's what haters are. It might come in the form of a family member. We talked about that. I gotta make a lot. Man, there's so many videos I wanna make. Ugh, I got all these ideas. Um, and stuff that I've experienced to share. But anyway, so uh, I've shared this example before. You got to think of it like this too. When you start to ascend in your purpose and do what's right for you and make yourself happy, others are going to try to pull you down and stuff. Again, that's why you want to build and move in silence probably in the beginning. Uh, there's a story of a uh, fisherman and his crabs. So this man was walking down the dock and he spots a, fisher, a crab fisherman and looks over and you know the fisherman's tying up his boat and all that stuff. And the man looks at the barrel and all the crabs are there and the crabs are starting to crawl out the barrel. He goes, hey, hey, hey. He's like, aren't you gonna do anything? Your crabs are about to crawl out the barrel. The fisherman looks at him and he goes, hey, just keep watching. As the man keeps watching the barrel, the crabs are beginning to climb out of the barrel. Right when they get near the top, you know what happens? All those other crabs in the barrel, yoink, they pull them back down. A lot of people don't want you to succeed. They're like the crabs in the barrel. They're gonna try to yoink you down. So you gotta get over what people think and expect that opposition that people are gonna pull you down. That's how you know you're doing the right thing. But we ain't worried about that because you on your path, you on your purpose, you're here to share your gift and your light. That's what you're here for, light worker. Starseed, that's what you're here for. That's what we're here for. That's what you are here for as a soul to share your gifts with the world. This is your purpose. Life will become a beautiful divine flow when you do more of what you love. Opportunities and money, and so much more will come to you when you answer your calling, the calling of your heart, the calling of your soul. This is what God, the divine, wants you to do. All that is. It's what you're meant for. It's what you were created for. Everybody has a song inside of them. One of the quotes that popped up 
the late great Dr. Wayne Dyer. He's been coming up in my life lately a lot. Love him. Great teacher for me. For us all. Uh, one of his greatest quotes, or not greatest, but great quotes that always stuck out in my mind. He says, don't die with your music still in you. You know how many people die in this life? And yeah, they had kids and they raised a family and, you know, lived, you know, got to travel and do some things and they worked at a company and there's nothing wrong with that either. But you know how many people also live lives like that and get to the end of their life and go, damn, I really didn't ever get to do what I wanted to do. I didn't really get to live life on my terms. I really did. So they live this unfulfilled life. So they've accomplished some things. And yes, they've uh, had some fulfillment, but that true calling deep down outside. And maybe it is just raising a family and that's all good. They're fulfilling their purpose. Again, you've got to figure out what your divine purpose is. My dad, I know for a fact, his calling was to be a teacher. He should have been a teacher. And we've talked about it many times. He's like, and he's substitute teaching now. And I was, you know, I asked him the other day, I was like talking to him. I was like, I was like, man, I remember you telling me years ago when I was like a kid and you were like, you know, I always wanted to teach. And I was like, why didn't you just do that? And he goes, well, my dad talked me out of being a teacher because he told me finance would give me more opportunities. And I listened to him. He's like, it worked out pretty well. I was like, it did. And it didn't. You also missed a huge part of what you really wanted to do with your life. But now he's substitute teaching and he's all good and he's happy as can be. That's what he should have been his whole life. He should have been a teacher. He should have been like a high school teacher. He'd have been perfect. My dad is like the perfect high school teacher. This sweet old dude who's like chill, but like still would be like, you got to do your shit, man. You know, he would have been an amazing teacher. He is now a substitute. But anyways, he didn't miss his calling. He's doing it now, but he would have been a lot more happy and fulfilled if he'd have just been a teacher his whole life. So what's your calling? What is it you want to do? This is your purpose. Life will become a divine flow. Opportunities, money, and so much more will come to you when you answer your calling. The quote, don't die with your music still in you, Dr. Wayne Dyer. The other quote, or wait, not quite yet. So you will be fulfilled at a soul level. Money, opportunities, relationships, everything will come to you. But you won't even care about all that stuff. You know why? It'll be nice, but you won't even care. You know why? Because you'll be so fulfilled at a deep level by answer your, answering your calling. All that stuff won't even matter. When I was training, I would do like 10, 12 hour days. Like back to back weeks, months at a time. And at that time, I loved it. And I didn't really feel like I would feel tired. But I, I always call it little kid tired. Like think about a little kid when they're out playing all day. They're exhausted. But you know how happy they are because they're so fulfilled. I call that being little kid tired. You want to be little kid tired as an adult. That you've been working all day on what you really love to do. And you're exhausted at the end of the day. You're literally you just crash. You're done. But you know how fulfilled you are? because you're answering your calling. We want to get little kid tired. You will want to work on it. This is also that saying like, do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. You have a unique gift you have to share, bro, sis, my family, my friends, you guys have got to do this. That's what you're here for. So what are your gifts? What is it that you have to offer that's unique to you, that you enjoy, that makes you happy first? Because imagine doing something that makes you happy. Your product, whatever you produce, however you go about it, is automatically going to emanate that vibration because it's coming from a place of happiness, of fulfillment, of purity. It's real. That shit's real. You got to do that. This is your path to your most happy, fulfilling, abundant life. A life of purpose. What are your gifts? You got to do it. Ooh, love this quote. And I'm not going to do a card on this video because I want you to sit with this quote today and I'm going to leave you with a question. The quote is from Mark Twain. The two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. Mark Twain. Great literary mind of the ages. So what are your unique gifts? What do you enjoy doing? What's fulfilling for you? What's going to make you happy? What doesn't feel like work to you when you do it? That's what you should be doing. That's all I got for you today, guys. Peace and love. Love you so much. I'll see you next time. Later. Peace.